It's Thursday, October 8th, 2020. Hi, my name is Tom Ogburn, and I'm pastor at Westwood Baptist Church in Cary, North Carolina. Welcome back to my office. It's, it's been a good day. But before I wrap up, I want to claim a few minutes with you, and thanks for spending the time with me. I introduced on Monday 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we began at verse 7. We're going to walk through the rest of that passage and, and on to the close of this chapter over these next few days. I'm glad you've taken this time to be with me because what I want you to hear is that you are a treasure. More importantly, God has a treasure within you that can change the world. So I know we face difficult days. We know, I know we face moments of frustration and aggravation, senses of isolation, and with the conflict in our culture, separation. But I want you to know in this time that we hold a treasure within us that changes the story. And it gives us the capacity to be people who can help change the world. So I want you to know that our call is to not only survive this season, but to thrive in it as the people of Jesus Christ. So let's look at, at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll begin again at verse 7, and I'll keep going from there. What we heard was this. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down and not destroyed. We heard those words on Monday, and they reminded us that in the midst of difficulty, there were still, there's still an invitation to thrive in that moment, that Paul, despite all that was going on around him, still found hope because he understood that he held within him the power of the presence of God, that he, in the simple, ordinary body he carried, carried something precious, something remarkable. It was God's promise for the world. It was the word he knew through faith in Jesus Christ. It was the power of God. In fact, the all-surpassing power is from God that he holds within him and that we hold within us as the people of Jesus Christ. He continues, and we're going to look at verses 10, 11, and 12 tonight. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Paul has talked about the struggle that he's faced, and now he begins to put a different spin on it. He says, listen, this idea that suffering is part of the story is not new to us. And he reminds them that they carry the death of Christ with them, that Christ has suffered before them, but the suffering of Christ was different. It is redemptive in nature for the suffering of Christ the Christ of the cross, led to the resurrection that changed everything. So they carry the death of Christ with them, the pain and the sorrow that's part of the story, but it gives them a chance then as they embrace the full story of Jesus to begin to be proclaimers of redemption. So you hear them say, we always carry around with us in our body the death of Jesus, so the life of Christ may also be revealed in our body. In the midst of his own struggle, in the midst of his own suffering, what he finds is not the, a pointless suffering, but instead in his sorrow, he is reminded of life. Life found in Jesus Christ, that the suffering of Christ gives way to the resurrection of Christ, which gives us new life which lets us, through the power of Jesus, see the power of resurrection, where sin gives way to life, death gives way to hope, where the power of God is on display. So as he describes this, he says, listen, we have that in display. We always carry around the body of the, uh, in our bodies the death of Christ, so the life of Christ may also be real, revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be also revealed in our mortal bodies that although they're facing the suffering and the reality of the moment where they find themselves, the result is in their lives, the power of God, the resurrection of Jesus, the death of Jesus that becomes the life of Jesus is on display. He says, so then the death that at work is us, but life is at work in you. He wanted them to understand that they were his living testimony as well, that because of the proclamation that he has preached Christ and him crucified, because they have demonstrated the suffering of Christ and proclaimed that message significantly. It is Jesus Christ who suffered and died. It is Christ who was crucified. They wanted them to know, but then they were able to come back and say, it is also this Christ who is resurrected. It is this Christ who is the way to new life, to salvation, to hope. 
and he says for them that's on display in you. So I want you to know that despite the fact we face difficulty in this season, it is not a sign that God has forgiven us, that God has forgotten us. For suffering is a part of the story. We know that, right? There are good days and difficult days, but in all of them, know that the power of God is on display through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That all surpassing knowledge of the power of God that he's talked about in ordinary clay jars the power of the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ on display in our broken bodies, in our simple faiths. It's on display that we might also then proclaim life. From death comes life. From the midst of the suffering of Christ, the cross of Christ comes hope. And the story of the resurrection tells us of the power of God that defeats sin and transforms sorrow into celebration, that turns sin into forgiveness and grace. So I want you to know while these are difficult days, as we look at our own story of faith, I want you to hear that the power of God, the all-surpassing power of God, lives in these jars of clay, our lives through faith in Christ. That we are the display of Christ, recognizing in the difficulty we also find the promise of resurrection, of salvation, of hope, and of power. So you have the power you need in your faith for the living of these days. For the God of all of creation is in the midst of your story through faith in Christ. We who have claimed the cross of Christ also claim his resurrection. We who claim the death of Christ also claim his resurrection and the power of hope that that means. So hear that the hope that you have is greater than this moment, greater than the sorrow or the struggle, the isolation or the separation. For the power of God is at work in your life and in mine. So we have to have eyes to see and lips to proclaim that there is hope even in this moment. When we see so much going around us, there is hope. The hope we find is in a God who loves us and calls us by name, who invites us through faith in Christ to be his, who invites us through faith in Christ to claim the cross and the resurrection that we might have eternal life in him but also life now in him. So hear that life with God, the kingdom of God, is a, is a now and forever. You have the power you need through your faith in Christ to survive these days. For God is alive and at work in you. Hope resides as we proclaim our faith. Grace and salvation thrives in the midst of our proclamation of the story of Jesus. And in our sorrow, we're reminded of the death of Christ, the cross of Christ, we're invited to hope, seen in the resurrection of Jesus. So my friends, claim this today a day of hope, for the all-surpassing power of God is within you, an ordinary person like you and me. God is within us through faith in Christ, and we have the strength we need to not only survive these days, but to thrive, to live in hope and grace, to live in power and expectation. So have heart. We have the strength we need. Claim it. Amen. God be with us in this moment. It is so easy to become discouraged. Remind us, Lord, that in our suffering you are present. Lord, we see it in the death of Christ and the cross of Christ, but we also see it in the resurrection that, God, you are a God that takes us from death to life. Through faith in Christ, we move from sin to salvation. From this life, Lord, a promise to, to be in relationship with you now and forever. So give us hope through our faith that we might be a witness to others that there is hope for these days, that you are greater than this moment. God, I can hardly wait to tell your stories. May we, O oh God, be attentive to where you're at work in our life. May we see your power on display. May we feel the hope we need for this day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.